Hello enthusiasts and welcome back to the channel. As we all know, there's nothing quite like opening up a jar of weed and feeling your fingers instantly glue together just from touching a single nug. Sticky weed has almost become a badge of honor in cannabis culture. But have you ever wondered why some buds are stickier than others? That stickiness isn't just random, it's science. In today's video, we're going deep into the sticky truth, breaking down what makes cannabis resinous, why some strains are naturally gummier than others, and whether stickiness actually means stronger weed. Chapter 1. What makes weed sticky? That sticky texture comes from trichomes, which are those microscopic, crystal-like glands you see sparkling all over the bud. Trichomes are essentially the plant's chemical factory where cannabinoids like THC, CBD, and CBG are produced. When trichomes burst with resin, they create that tacky layer that makes cannabis sticky to the touch. This usually happens late in the flowering stage, when trichomes swell with oils to the point that the outer membrane can no longer contain them. At this stage, the gland heads are full, can be cloudy or amber-colored, and can rupture under pressure or when handled. The resin that is released then coats the surface of the bud, giving it that gummy texture we recognize as sticky weed. But here's the important part. Trichomes don't just exist to make us happy. They evolved as a defense mechanism. The resin helps protect the plant from UV radiation, stops pests from chewing on the flowers, and even slows down mold growth in harsh climates. So, stickiness is really the plant's survival strategy. We just happen to benefit from it by enjoying potent, flavorful buds. Chapter 2. Genetics. Born to be sticky. Stickiness starts in the DNA. Some cannabis strains are genetically programmed to pump out resin no matter what. Take Gorilla Glue, for example. The strain's entire name comes from how ridiculously sticky it is. Same with classics like White Widow or resin-heavy land races like Afghan Kush. These genetics come from regions where plants had to survive intense sunlight arid conditions, and hungry pests. Over thousands of years, they developed higher trichome production as a protective armor. On the flip side, some strains just aren't bred for stickiness. You can grow them perfectly and still end up with flour that feels drier or less tacky. That doesn't mean it's bad weed. It just means the strain prioritizes other traits, like lighter resin or fluffier flower structures. Think of it like dogs. A husky grows thick fur because its ancestors lived in the snow, while a greyhound stays sleek because it evolved in warmer places. Cannabis works the same way. Strains from sunny, mountainous, or desert climates developed genes that coded for heavy resin output to survive those conditions. Chapter 3. Growing Conditions Even the stickiest strain on paper won't hit full resin production if it's grown under weak conditions. Sticky weed is the result of the environment encouraging the plant to maximize trichome output. And that means strong, full-spectrum lighting that mimics the sun. Full-spectrum lighting is grow lighting designed to mimic the wavelengths of natural sunlight, covering everything from blue light, which drives vegetative growth, to red and far-red lighting which promotes flowering by signaling to the plant's phytochrome system that the days are shorter triggering its natural response to shift into reproductive mode to produce buds. By also including UV and infrared, full-spectrum lights give cannabis the broad range of energy it needs to maximize photosynthesis, resin production, and overall plant health, which is why outdoor-grown buds often feel incredibly resinous. Indoors, growers can also replicate this effect by using LEDs or HPS lights that include UVB diodes or bulbs during the late flowering stage by encouraging plants to push out extra oils for protection. Humidity and airflow also play a major role. Ideal conditions shift depending on the plant's stage of growth. For example, keeping relative humidity around 40 to 50 percent during the late flowering stage helps prevent mold while also signaling to the plant to produce more resin. Growers can also trigger even higher trichome output by employing a strategy of gentle, controlled stress by dropping nighttime temperatures 10 to 15 degrees lower than daytime during the last two weeks of flowering. This cold finish often boosts resin production while helping colors pop. Another often overlooked factor is airflow. A gentle but consistent breeze strengthens stems and prevents stagnant air, but it also creates micro-stresses on the leaf and flower surface, 
that nudges the plant to reinforce itself with more trichomes. Growers who dial in oscillating fans at canopy level often notice stickier, more aromatic flowers compared to stagnant rooms. Growers can also supplement their grow using products like CO2. By increasing CO2 levels in a grow space to between 1200 and 1500 ppm in sealed environments, plants can photosynthesize more efficiently, which gives them extra energy to funnel into trichome production. Think of it like supercharging the plant's metabolism. Without CO2 enrichment, a plant's resin production is capped by how much energy it can generate. With it, growers often see buds that are not just frosty, but sticky to the touch, because the plant has the fuel to pump out maximum resin. Now that we've covered some background on today's topic, we just wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, the Exhale Homegrown CO2 Company. They offer one of the most practical and reliable ways to introduce natural carbon dioxide into your grow. For over 20 years, Exhale has taken the science of fungal respiration and turned it into a clean, controlled, and highly effective solution for indoor gardening. Each bag is thoughtfully designed to meet the needs of real-world growers, from small home tents to fully sealed commercial rooms. It's a true plug-and-play system. Just hang the bag above your canopy and the fun guy inside get to work, producing a steady stream of CO2. This is possible because inside each bag is a proprietary substrate that serves as the fungi's food source, along with a patented, non-fruiting mycelium strain developed specifically for steady, reliable respiration. What really sets Exhale apart is that they were the first to bring the CO2 bag concept to market. While plenty of imitators have followed, none match Exhale's consistency or quality. That's why every product carries the original CO2 bag seal. So when you see that label, you know you're getting proven performance. And here's something special for our October monthly giveaway. Exhale will be providing one Cannabis Guy channel member with a free Exhale CO2 bag. This model delivers a steady 1300 ppm of CO2 for up to six months and is rated for grow spaces up to four by four feet or 120 cubic feet. For more information about Exhale and their products, Go to the video summary and visit their website at exhaleco2bags.com. While you're there, check out our promo codes from Exhale. It's a great way to save if you're ready to give it a try. Now let's get back to today's topic. Chapter 4. Stickiness versus Potency. This is where a lot of people get confused. Sticky weed is often associated with strong, but the two aren't always the same thing. Stickiness comes from the amount of resin, but potency depends on what's inside that resin. You could have a bud dripping with terpenes that's super sticky, but only tests at 15% THC. On the other hand, you could have a bud that feels less tacky, but is loaded with cannabinoids and tests at 28% THC. So why does this myth exist? Because in practice, sticky weed often does deliver a better experience, not because it's necessarily stronger, but because it's richer. Terpenes are oils, and oils are sticky. The more terpenes, the tackier the flower feels. And since terpenes don't just affect flavor and aroma, but also interact with cannabinoids through the entourage effect, sticky weed tends to hit with a more complex, satisfying high. That's why consumers have come to associate stickiness with being strong, even though the lab numbers don't always back it up. Chapter 5. Curing and Storage Here's something a lot of people overlook. Stickiness doesn't just depend on the plant. It also depends on how the flower is handled after harvest. During the drying and curing stage, moisture levels are carefully balanced to preserve trichomes. If buds are dried too quickly, the trichome heads become brittle and snap off, leaving flower that feels dry and crumbly. Similarly, if they're dried too slowly, mold risk increases and the resin can degrade. The sweet spot is a slow cure that locks in oils without letting the trichomes break down. A proper slow cure usually lasts at least two to four weeks, with many growers aiming for six to eight weeks to fully develop flavor, aroma, and resin quality. During this time, buds are kept in airtight jars and burped daily to release excess moisture, allowing the chlorophyll to break down while preserving the sticky oils. And why does storage matter so much? because trichomes are fragile. 
Exposure to oxygen, heat, or light degrades cannabinoids and evaporates terpenes, leaving the resin less sticky over time. That's why glass jars with humidity packs keep buds tacky and aromatic. They protect the volatile oils inside the resin. So if you open a jar six months later and your weed is still sticky, that's not just luck. It means the grower nailed their cure and you stored it right. And that's a wrap on today's episode. Whether you're dialing in your setup or just getting your hands in the soil for the first time, remember, this is a journey, and every small improvement adds up to bigger and better results. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to drop a comment below. I'd love to hear your story and what techniques have worked best for you. Your insights help fuel this community and shape future videos. And if you want to dive even deeper, consider becoming a Cannabis Guy channel member. You'll unlock access to monthly giveaways, exclusive content, loyalty badges, member-only discount codes, and much, much more. It's a great way to support the channel, stay informed, and grow right alongside an amazing group of cultivators. Thanks for tuning in to this educational video. And as always, keep being awesome and stay curious, my friends.